Welcome back to another video here on Anth.Tech, and in this one we're going to be taking a look at the brand new Samsung Galaxy Note 9. Okay, so here I am back on YouTube after that three month break, which you haven't seen any videos. I've pretty much been renaming the Anth.Tech brand with some different local companies like doing web development with WordPress and also some video productions and different ads and online promotional stuff. So that's why I haven't seen any videos here on YouTube in the past three months. Here I am back and I'll also still be doing that kind of stuff, which you can check out fully what I do, link down below on my services page. But here I am back and we're gonna be kicking it off with the Samsung Galaxy Note 9 review. And this was sent out by Verizon, but everything I do see in this video is my own. So just like always, everything is my own opinion, even if it was sent out by a different company. But other than that though, let's go ahead and jump into the review over the brand new Note 9. So here is the Samsung Galaxy Note 9. And this is the one in the lavender purple color, which also does come in a navy blue color. Now this does have the OLED panel by Samsung, which is the best OLED in the game when it comes to the smartphones. Now the screen on here is 6.4 inches at 1440 by 2960 with the ratio of 18 and a half by nine, which seems to be really popular for this year's smartphones. And then the pixels per inch is 516. And then one last number to get out of the way is the screen to body ratio, which is 83.4%. Now taking a look around the device, on the back we have the dual camera system and the fingerprint reader. Now taking a look at the bottom, here we have on the left, the auxiliary port, USB type C, the speaker, and then of course the S Pen. Along the right side is just the power button. On the top is going to be your SIM tray and microphone. And then along the left side is going to be the volume marker and also the best Bixby button. Now the camera on the Galaxy Note 9 did get updated, running a 12 megapixel F1.5, and then a second 12 megapixel 2.4. Now inside the camera app, here we have a few different settings we can work with. So the first one is panorama mode, and pretty much it'll just take a really wide angle shot. Here we have the pro mode, so it's exactly what it sounds like. You can change your ISO, is what I'm doing right now. Here you can change your shutter speed, so you can make it really fast, really slow, which will affect the brightness and how the image looks. Then, of course, you can also shift the focusing. So wherever you see these green dots, is where it's in focus. So here we can see I'm focusing on the, on the Xbox and then the controller. So you get that really good shot. Now when it comes to live focus, this is very similar to iOS's portrait mode, which if you take a picture of like a person of their face or anything else, it'll blur the background, which gives it a really cool DSLR look. Now auto, it'll always launch into this whenever you launch the camera. So if you need a, to take a quick shot, here you go. Now super slow-mo, we record at 720p and 960 frames per second which is really slow and it's actually really impressive when compared to other phones. Now AR emoji is pretty similar to Snapchat's filters and stuff like that. So there's really too not much to it, but it's kind of like a knockoff when it comes to Snapchat and Instagram's uh, features like that and also the iOS's uh, an emoji. And last but not least is going to be hyperlapse, which will just record a video and speed it up and make it into a time lapse. Now heading into the camera settings, First we have the main camera picture size. So I'm gonna change this to 16 by nine with 3.7 uh, megabytes, so to save size on the storage. Now the video size will change us to UHD 60, that we can get the best video quality. And then here we'll also adjust the HDR, and we'll turn this on as the images always seem to look a little bit more colorful and more true to life. And then here is super slow-mo. I will change this into multi-take. It'll just make it a little bit faster. And then into the front camera, here we have the same options. I'll make that 16 by nine. We might as well make this QHD just to get the better quality on the front, especially for Snapchat, which may not be the best on Android. This will at least take advantage of that a little bit better. And again, we'll turn HDR on and there's a few different settings that can be changed in here. And now taking a look at the selfie camera, this is an eight megapixel F1.7, which is pretty much always in focus, which is really nice. Now the Note 9 does pack some pretty big beef underneath the hood, which has a Snapdragon 845 and also six gigabytes of RAM, which is the 128 gigs ROM option. It does come in eight gigabytes, but then you have to step it up to the 512 gigabyte ROM option. Now when it comes to speed on here, we're getting 2,438 on single core and 8,856 on multi-core score. So now we take a look at the iPhone 10's performance, which is about a year old, and this test was taken today. As we can see, the date is September 2nd. This is getting 4,234 and 9,927. So as you can see, the six gigabytes of RAM in the Note 9 
really just goes to show how well iOS is optimized to run on only three gigs, which is on the iPhone 10, which then again is a year old phone, performing about double on single core and then 2000 more on multi-core score. So now taking a look at the security and biometrics on the Samsung Galaxy Note 9, it does pack a few different options. And the first one we're gonna set up is the fingerprint, which as we can see, it's on the back and they did move it down a little bit when it compared to the last year's Note 8 and also the S8s where they were right next to the camera and you'd accidentally like smush the camera and it just looked really bad and you can never unlock it very accurately. So now that they moved it down, it's a little bit easier to use and set up. So here I am gonna uh, turn it on here and as you can tell, it turns on really fast. Now, previous Touch ID models from Apple and then also uh, previous fingerprint sensors from Samsung, you have to wake the screen and then do it. Whereas on here, you just tap it and boom, you're in. Next up is facial recognition. Now this is not very safe. And next time we'll set up the iris scanner after this. So pretty much what the face recognition will do is it'll scan your face like you can see here, which it does really fast. And then I'll go ahead and turn this one on and then also lock the screen. Then you can see how fast this is, which it is quite fast, but like I said before, it's not very secure since it's pretty much just doing, taking a picture of you, matching it and seeing if it works and then boom, you're in. Now this iris scanner is going to be a little bit more accurate. Now, if you do remember the Samsung Galaxy S8, the iris scanning was very slow. It would easily take about four to five seconds just to unlock your phone. So it pretty much made it useless when you can just use the fingerprint sensor, which is on the Note 9. So here it's pretty easy and fast to set up, just like everything there is on the security on the Note 9. So I'll go ahead and turn this one on and then we'll see how fast this one is compared to uh, the iPhone 10's Face ID. So we'll go ahead and turn this on here and then lock it up. And here we can test the speed. So as you can see, I'm swiping and boom, I'm in. Now there is a little bit of a delay as you can see, but next time we'll take a look at the iPhone 10's Face ID. So let me go grab the iPhone. So you can tell it's already unlocked. I can just go ahead and swipe up. And this is definitely a lot faster than the iris. It's just boom, swipe, and that's it. So it's very fast. Now taking a look at the brand new redesigned S Pen, all you have to do is push it in and boom, it pops right out. So now first off, we have the little button on here, which is how you're pretty much going to mostly interact with it. And there's also Samsung's logo at the top. So it does act like a stylus, but by pushing that button is where you access the features. So here is the create a note, and here you can kind of scribble, write notes, do whatever you want real quick without having to type anything. And here we are with save it and it'll save right into the Samsung notes, which will sync to any other Samsung devices. Now here is the screen, right? So pretty much what it'll do is take a screenshot and then you can customize it by changing the thickness, the color, and what type of writing utensil you want to use. And then that's pretty much it for doing this. And you can take another screenshot and save it and send it to someone if you'd like to. And then here is also the message. So what this will do is it'll animate. You can pick a different color and then you can pick a different style. So here I'll just pick the standard uh, brush tool and then I can just do a little scribble, play it back and it'll do that. And you can text it to someone, email it to someone, post it on Twitter or wherever you want to post it. And then here I'll change it to it, say different design like the snowflakes and we might as well make this like a ready pink. So there we go. I just drew a little bit, click the play button and boom, there it is. I'll go ahead and click done. It'll export it as an MP4 and save it right into your gallery, easy for sharing. And that's pretty much going to wrap it up for the S Pen's features. There's a few different things you can do in here and you can also download more in the Play Store. And the next up is going to be the sound test versus the iPhone 10. And then here, the Note 9 also does feature wireless charging. Just like any of past phones from like three to four years ago, this does also feature it. 
Okay, so that's pretty much gonna do it for this video over the Samsung Galaxy Note 9. Hope you guys did enjoy this review. And also there's gonna be two links down below in the description, one for Samsung's website and also another one and will take you into Verizon's website. That's why if you do like this phone, you can go ahead and order it right off that link by changing your colors and also storage. And so pretty much do it all from there. And also I am going to plug there again, my premium subscriber portal, which is on my website. And pretty much in there, you're gonna get early videos like this which if you were a subscriber in there, you would have seen this video about a week ago, and also paid only content that will only be in there. So pretty much what it is going to do is uh, do that kind of stuff, but it does cost $5 per month, or $50 for a year, or $60 for a lifetime. So it, pricing does make a lot of sense just to do the lifetime for what it is. So if you do 12 months of the month to month, and over the course of a year, you're gonna end up paying the lifetime, or by doing the yearly, you're just gonna save $10 off of the lifetime price, or off of the one year price. So kind of pricing does make a lot of sense just to do the lifetime as it is gonna give you lifetime access to early videos and only content that will ever and only be inside of there. So that's pretty much going to wrap it up for this video. I hope you guys did enjoy. And if you did, please tap a like on this video down below as it really helps out. And also I'd really appreciate it if you would subscribe to the channel as it also really helps out. And also don't forget to click that bell notification. And that's pretty much going to wrap it up for me. And as always, stay classy.